Good morning, everybody. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning session. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a school and it is not a church. And it is affiliated with any church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2021. Now, in these schools, we use and teach by the true and original names and titles for our Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name, each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He's incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in this pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him, in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right with himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now the shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in the divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifest himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. 
Now after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one, exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of the threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And the eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have a prayer by Dr. Irene Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Psalms, the 19th division, or the 19th division of Psalms. And our scripture reader would be Dr. Danette Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. day class. We'd like to ask Yahweh our Elohim to give us that patience, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and most of all that revelation so we might understand him through his son Yahshua Messiah. Let us ask this and let's all say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Sorry, everyone, for that short music. We're having technical difficulties with this music. Um, I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Old and New Testaments critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina. I'll be reading uh, the 19th Division of Psalms. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard, yet their message is gone out through all the earth, and their story to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes, statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh, my rock and my redeemer. I have read the 19th division of Psalms. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 All righty. Let's start class. And, uh, uh, we're happy to have Dr. Will Williams back again. He was out in Chicago last week. Uh, he went to the Celebration of Life for Dr. Lee Warren. Okay. Uh, also, Ken Away. Good to see her again. Okay, uh, our first speaker will be uh, the, uh, Dr. Will Williams. Okay, he's CEO and Director. Director. Okay, so sorry <laughs> about that. That's okay. Here you go. <laughs> Good day, class. Good morning. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to be here with you to learn more of this great and awesome, colossal, stupendous panoramic vision of revelation given to us by Yahweh our Elohim, who is the resurrected Yahshua the Messiah. Okay? And as was stated, I did come back from Chicago and I celebrated, I went to the celebration of life of Dr. Lee Moore. In fact, I live streamed it, at least I attempted to. And I was connected to the the funeral home's Wi-Fi, so I don't know what the issue was, but they just kept doing that. But fortunately, I always keep a plan, a plan B in mind. See, I recorded it on the camera, the whole thing, so in case of anything happens, it's always a recording on the camera, it's as it is right now, like real live streaming simultaneously, both on YouTube as well as Facebook. All right, so now if anything happens on either one, you know, or something happens here, even if, like if the power shuts out, 
there's a battery on the camera that will keep the camera going, you know, so that the recording card in the camcorder will be recording everything. So that's always like a backup. Something I learned early on when we first started doing videos, you know, way back in the, gosh, in the early 2000s. Well, I actually started doing videos November 1996. So I have videos going back that far, like decades. And it's just little things I learned along the way, you know, as far as, you know, <laughs> this, that, and the other. Not that I'm an expert or anything. And uh, going back to this title thing, the CEO and all of that, you know, it's true in this respect. I am the founder of this organization, you know, technically, you know. But I'm not the founder of the doctrine that we right. espouse, okay? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not the only one. The, uh, the other founders of this organization, you know, is, is, is the Ramirez family, Dr. Eddie Ramirez, Dr. Irene Ramirez, Kenway Kleinschmidt, mm -hmm. and Joe Ceballos. Right. You know, because we started at his house, his mom's house out in the San Fernando Valley. So these are the founding members of our Type Pattern Workshop, okay? And, and this was started not to be, well, this was started just to, promote and to continue the propagation of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, which is by the doctrine espoused by one Henry Clifford Kinley, who claimed that he received a divine vision and a divine revelation. Okay. Ah, all right. Um, I didn't have any particular subject uh, I wanted to get into today, but I'm always open for suggestions, I suppose. <laughs> you over there. Um. Mm-hmm. Have the microphone so people can hear what you got to say. Um, I was just thinking, um, maybe go over um, the body and the tabernacle. The body and the tabernacle. Our, our body, how it um, correlates to the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Maybe in a little bit more detail. Because? Because that is our makeup. Yeah, because. I'm asking why do you why want Why do it? I want it? Because um, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to hear it in person and be a little more hear familiar. It. Hear it in person. Okay. I said videotape ain't good enough, but, <laughs> but you want no. to hear it in person. If I can pick up you know, other things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, the physical body, huh, okay. You know, I could do an overview. There are people that, look, I, I worked in the nursing field for many years, and there are people in this that can go through this body a whole lot better than I can. However, I can do a bit of an overview. I can do an overview. Uh, that, that I can do, you know, as far as an overview with this, the body here. And uh, let's see, maybe we could kind of, let me see what we can do here. I want... The Theosophy plate and the Godhead plate. Maybe I could do something here. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, that means I need some clamps. was the physical body, make a comparison of the physical body with the tabernacle, which is why this chart exists. Mm -hmm. 
man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. All right? However, what I would like to do is to try to peer into the reasoning of why we even go into the physical body in the first place. Okay? Now, um, this is a section I think I want. Go to volume three, page fifteen. Okay, where it says man and his physiological makeup. That's the first pattern. I want you to read yeah, I want you to read that. Um Brit Mallahan book, volume three, page fifteen, second paragraph. Man in the physiological makeup is controlled and functions by nine systems which are perfectly and harmoniously balanced within his body. Although the effects of each of these systems is manifested through the whole body, each can be arranged in a fashion similar to the furnishings of the tabernacle and the attributes of the superincorporeal form. The nine systems of man's physical body are as follows. One, the nervous, nervous system. Two, reproductive system. Three, endocrine or gran, granular system. Glandular system. Four, respiratory system. Five, circulatory system. Six, excretory system. Seven, digestive system. Eight, muscular system and nine, skeletal system. When these nine systems are grouped in the fashion as the furnishings of the tabernacle and the attributes of the super incorporeal form, the arrangement would be as follows. Okay, now, he, now he's going to shift the camera up here. And we're going to show this, this little part here. The arrangement would be as follows. Okay, go ahead and read the arrangement. Nervous system, mm -hmm. reproductive system, and endocrine system. Mm -hmm. Respiratory system, circulatory system, and excretory system. Digestive, di digestive system, muscular system, and skeletal system. Okay, hold it right there. I just want to say something. See, these represent the attributes. Right. See, according to the pattern, because in the tabernacle pattern, in each compartment you have three articles. See, in the court roundabout you have the altar of sin and sacrifice brazen labor, and the cup of holy anointing oil. In the holy place, you have the seven brass lampstand, table of shoe bread, and the altar of incense. In the most holy place, you have the two archangels on top of a mercy seat. See, that's a three-in-one fit configuration, okay? That's what, that's what your body is pointing to. Okay, keep reading. This grouping of the systems of the physical body in a fashion similar to the furnishings of the tabernacle and as the attributes of the superincorporeal form is not without a definite and concise explanation. We will compare each system of the physical body in the arrangement set forth above to each attribute of Elohim, superincorporeal form. Okay, so now that's, that's the reason why you study the physical body. It's more to it than just correlate this and another. The, this is what Dr. Kinley said. He said the physical body, or the man when he was created in the image and likeness of Elohim, said that he was a photostatic right. copy of the original. The original being the archetype pattern. This is the original pattern, okay? Which is this super incorporeal, this super incorporeal shape and form, this great heavenly anthropomorphic being, all right? You are creating a photostatic copy from that. And the systems of your body, they are the attributes materialized in part, right. not in totality. 
See, those attributes, we, you know, those systems we, we read reflect the attributes materialized in the flesh. But they reflect what's happening here. Okay? Continue reading. As, as divine intelligence is the crown of the super incorporeal form. Now go, come back up here, Iggy. Yeah, and can we do something with the mic? Can yeah, that's what I was going to... Okay, yeah, just fix it, and, and I'm and, and going to do that. I'll just fix it, and I'm uh, and going to do that right quick. Uh, oh, her mic. Yeah, you got distortion. Oh, I'm getting distortion. Okay, I'm, I'm, it's what people thought I was always distorted. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, go ahead and start that again. Um, let's see. The, the grouping of the systems of the physical body in a fashion similar to the furnishings of the tabernacle and as the attributes of the superincorporeal form is with, not without a definite and concise explanation. Mm -hmm. We will compare each system of the physical body in the arrangement set forth above to each attribute Elohim, superincorporeal form. As divine intelligence okay, uh -huh. is the crown of the super incorporeal form and is the highest attribute ruling over all of the other attributes right. and coordinating their functions, so the nervous system of the physical body dominates. Okay, so now that's that's the reflection intelligence, the attribute intelligence is reflected by the nervous system. In other words, the nervous system is intelligence, in part, materialized. Mm -hmm. Get it? Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what we're pointing to up here. Because see, because look, uh, mm, do we have another? No, I guess not. Yeah, so I'm just pointing to this up here. Because see, look, if you remember a few weeks back when we went through Theosophy versus Kabbalah, Right? Mm -hmm. If you remember that. Mm -hmm. We showed, we read from a transcript how Dr. Kinder described this. He said that intelligence was the crown, see, and it's flanked by wisdom and knowledge. In other words, it's like a triad. And this triad gives birth to the next set of triad mm -hmm. attributes. Beauty, flanked by love and justice, which in turn gives birth to the next set of triads, which is foundation, power, strength. I have something in my mind, but I'll wait. Do we get to it? Because we're going to need another plate, but I'll wait. Keep reading. Commands and coordinates all of the other systems of the physical body. See, that's what you. That's what the intelligence. That's what the uh, the nervous system does. Your nervous. See, when when the. himself mm -hmm. and this intelligence supersedes all other intelligences mm -hmm. whether it be of angels or of man likewise there must be a physical manifestation in our bodies to show forth this attribute mm -hmm. so our nervous system through which our mind functions is the highest system of our bodies the fullest capabilities and cap capacities of our nervous system have not been discovered. Neither does any man know the depths 
or the intelligence of Yahweh. Yeah, because see, that's what people say. We only use like only like what ten percent of our brain mm -hmm. or something like that. So which means there's a vast something out there that we don't know about. See why? It's a type of shadow. See of the cloud. See your brain, gray, white, gray, and white matter. So it's a type of that cloud. It's a type of eternity. All right. We'll continue reading. From divine intelligence stem divine wisdom mm -hmm. and knowledge working as a pair and manifesting the next highest degree of excellence. Remember, each attribute is perfect within itself. David wrote of the wisdom and knowledge understanding of Yahweh and recognized their excellence. One needs only to think of the polytechnical makeup and operation of the universe or the physical body to make him declare the su superiority of this awesome pair by the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh the universe in its totality was created and it functions with unerring accuracy and infallibility the corresponding systems of the physical body which are paired together to bring about a high degree of excellence and performance, second only to the nervous system, are the reproductive and endocrine systems. Mm -hmm. is, is there a greater degree of attainment than the ability to create and reproduce oneself? Mm -hmm. This is accomplished by means of the re re reproductive system and the endocrine system, mm -hmm. working together in their capacities and forming an inseparable bond. The reproductive system never forgets how to produce the same copy, and the endocrine system supplies the stimulus and substance mm -hmm. for such copying or reproduction and maintenance. The endocrine system supplies all the wants and needs of the body without conscious effort. These two systems are really the backbone of the physical body, and the prophet Isaiah wrote of the two corresponding spiritual attributes, wisdom and knowledge. Thusly, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength and salvation. Okay, now we got the word law here. Right. See, because... See, law, they said the law was in his mouth. See, the reason why that word is there, because if you was to, okay, here's the word law. If you used to draw a straight line from law all the way back to the back of your head, see, you have the pituitary gland back there, right. which is part of the endocrine system, okay? See, and it's the law, see, because on one side of the pituitary gland, it secretes seven hormones, and on the other side, it secretes three. Why? Because see, look at the law, draw a line. See, that would be like the Ten Commandment law that was placed up in, in the Ark of the Covenant. That had seven laws on one side, three on the other. And it was the law that governed Israel. Just like as she's describing about the endocrine system, see, that's the law that governs your body. Because it regulates all these, it regulates the, these hormones and stuff, okay? But keep reading. We have now discussed the first triad of the spiritual body, mm -hmm. superincorporeal form, intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, comparing them with the nervous system, mm -hmm. reproductive system, and endocrine system of the physical body. Let's get it, keep it, let's, let's get it straight. Intelligence would be the nervous system, as the nervous system materialized. The nervous system is intelligence materialized. The reproductive system is... Wisdom, in part, materialized. Same as, as intelligence, in part, materialized. The endocrine system is knowledge. The attribute of knowledge, in part, materialized. Because we say all the time that matter is spirit materialized. Right. See? And we're showing you in a persnickety way exactly how these attributes, which is spirit, how they are materialized in the physical creation. This particular physical creation, which is your body, because mm -hmm. that's what the that's what what the, what the question was asked. And see, a lot of people will go through you know the basic correlations, you know this, 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 and that, which is good, no, nothing wrong with that. But why? Right. Why are we going through these correlations of the physical body? What what purpose is it? See, we're trying to show you that it's pointing to this one. 
because you're made a photostatic copy of this one. See? It's really who you are. Right. Okay? Let's continue reading. Let us now proceed to a discussion of the second triad mm -hmm. of beauty, love, and justice, mm -hmm. and see their parallelism in the physical body as the respiratory system, circulatory system, and excretory system. Mm -hmm. The attributes of beauty encompasses the intercession of the invisible creator of the universe. Mm -hmm with his constituents to the end that the, the creature is made one with the creator. Mm -hmm. This is the beauty of the almighty Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It entails a condescension, a reaching out to help us, a transforming to us to become as he is. This attribute of beauty is portrayed by the respiratory system, the lungs, of our physical body, for it is by the functioning of this system that the air or atmosphere in which we live, we move, and have our being is brought into intimate contact with the cells of our body. It animates and gives life and substance to every fiber, cell, and tissue of our physical body, and without it, we could not live. This air typifies spirit, which is Yahweh. The Apostle Paul wrote, for in him, Yahweh or spirit, Yahweh or spirit, we live and move and have our being. This is the beauty of Yahweh, mm -hmm. that he has given us of his spirit through intercession. This is, that's what just happened. See, see, and, that's, and I didn't emphasize that, though, and I'm going to do that, because you have to make that comparison with the tabernacle. Like, up here, we got two halves of the brain up here, and we talk about the law and the mouth, about the, arc, I mean, the um, tables of stone. But the two halves up here, that points to the two archangels on top of the mercy seat as well, that kind of thing. And so when we're going down, see, you know, you got the, we, you know, we, you know, you can get persnickety, but we're just going over the thing about the attributes. But, you know, we can say about the veils, blue, purple, and scarlet, you know, we got the, uh, over here, you have the thyroid gland, which secretes iodine, which means purple. You have oxygenated blood going back, to, going, to, going around, that's depicted red. And deoxygenated blood depicted as blue, see? Right. right? And that's here at the veil, okay? But right now, we're just doing an overall view as far as the attributes, mm -hmm. comparing the body with the attributes, okay? So I'm, I'll get that in there. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to do something? No, I think a battery's running out. Oh, that's what it is? Okay. So you want me to pause for a moment? I should got a new one right there. I'll put it in when she gets it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, because see, before you go, uh, the lungs, that's what she was reading, see, that the jaw line, that points to the altar of incense here. See, see, which is like the intercessor between the stench of the burning flesh and the nostrils of Yahweh. Okay. I just wanted to throw that in there and make that comparison right quick. Okay. All right. Uh, what, what do you want me to do? Stay right there. Just stay right there. Okay. Oh, oh I'm the one that needs a battery. I thought it was. Stuff is always good. Say so. Hello there. Hello. Oh, whoa, whoa, hello. Yes, yes. Greetings, greetings. We are alive. Okay. Continue reading with you. The golden altar of incense in the tabernacle points up this attribute of beauty. For as the aromatic, aromatic mm -hmm. fragrance of the incense filled in the tabernacle and penetrated the veil unto the most holy place is what a sweet 
was a sweet smelling savor unto the nostrils of Yahweh, mm -hmm. who dwelled in the cloud between the wings of the cherubims. The love of Yahweh is really a manifestation of his beauty, for it is through the love of Yahweh that one becomes knowledgeable of his beauty. This love is typified by the circulatory system operating in our physical bodies. Yahweh Elohim could be ever so beautiful, but if he did not have the means of showing us this beauty, we would not know about it. Similarly, although the respiratory system, beauty, handles the air that we breathe, if it were not for the circulatory system, love, this air would never reach the needy cells and tissues. The great blood vessel, the aorta, and its branches carry life-giving blood to the bountifully, bountifully supplied with blood, I mean, to all cells of the body, discriminating against none. Even cancerous cells and tissues which portray evil are bountifully supplied with blood. The Apostle John wrote, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and he gave him for all of us, both saint and sinner. The golden candlestick in the tabernacle gave or distributed light to all parts of the holy place, and thus typifies the love of Yahweh. The excretory system composed of the kidneys and its tubules and bladder what? wash or remove impurities from the blood of the physical body. The delicate tubules of the kidneys selectively reabsorb back into the bloodstream all of the good and necessary elements and refuses to reabsorb any of the harmful or unnecessary elements. This process of selective reabsorption takes place after all of the elements have passed out from the bloodstream into the tub tubules of the kidneys. Then the di dividing of the sheep from the goats begins. This is a wonder of wonders that the tubules have the built-in intelligence to know to accept back into the bloodstream the good elements and to refuse to accept the bad or harmful elements which are passed on down the track and out of the body in the urine. This system, therefore, exemplifies the attribute of justice. In the overall purpose of Yahweh, all men were concluded under ignorance and darkness, so that no one had the advantage or ascendancy over another, and therefore could not brag or boast of his accomplishments. And Yahweh sent his Son into the world, and those who believe on him through faith were saved or became one with the Son, reabsorbed. And those who did not believe were cast out in the draft or refused likewise. One can see this justice displayed in the heart of our physical body. As all of the blood loses its oxygen and returns to the heart where the dividing takes place according to justice. The bad blood on the right side of the heart, the left side as one faces another. And the good blood on the left side, the right side, one as one faces another. Similarly, the bread on the table of shoe bread was arranged into six loaves on one side and six loaves on the other side, showing this dividing by the word of Yahweh. Yahshua the Messiah said that he came to divide the sheep from the goats. The relationship of the respiratory system, circulatory system, and excretory system 
is well known by all physicians, for they make up a triad of harmoniously working components which do the body a great service in their operations. The last triad to be discussed is the triad of foundation, power, and strength which are represented by the digestion, digestive system, musculatory system, and skeletal system, respectively in our bodies. The, the digestive system concerns itself with the consumption of foodstuffs and the extraction of the essence of the same fatty acids, carbohydrates, proteins, minerals, etc and their conversion into living cells and tissues to build up the body with the non-convertible portion of foodstuffs being eliminated from the body as waste matter. This operation of the di digestive system is the foundation or the overall purpose of the functioning body. Likewise, the purpose of Yahweh works the same way for it has a downward phase all concluded under sin by the Adamic transgression, the extraction of the essential part of man, the soul, by the putting off of the sins of the fleshly body, oh, I'm sorry, yes, of the fleshly body by the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, and the converting of the soul into an essential part of the body of Elohim. As the fatty acids, carbohydrates, and proteins are the building stones of our physical body, so are the souls of men that lively, the lively stones of the temple of Yahweh, which is the body of Elohim. So the foundation of the groundwork of the whole purpose of Yahweh is Yahshua the Messiah, through whom all Yahweh's purpose is carried out and the workings of our digestive system just vindicates it. It is through the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yahshua the Messiah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the purpose of Yahweh is perpetrated or carried out. The twin attributes of power and strength hardly need any explanation, for it is quite plain that these two attributes are served by the muscles and bones of our physical bodies. And one need not elaborate upon the fact that the attribute of foundation is closely allied with power and strength, as typified by the alliance of the digestive system with the muscles and bones. In other words, as the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah is the foundation upon which Yahweh is manifesting his power and strength. So is the digestion, absorption, and conversion of food the source from which one derives his muscle power and his strong bones. It must be said here also that the attributes of power and strength from the legs of the superincorporeal form Elohim and therefore are the two witnesses of Yahweh manifesting in the earth plane, the two great pillars of Solomon's temple, called Hakin and Boaz, are another manifestation of this. The prophet Isaiah looked at these two witnesses and said, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth uh, peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy Yahweh reigneth. We have thus concluded a short explanation of all the nine systems working in the physical body, display or typify the nine attributes of Elohim, the word of Yahweh, and how each system works in harmony with another system to perfect the total operation of the physical body. For man being made in the likeness and image of Elohim, who is perfection itself, must show the perfection working in his physical body. Okay. <clears throat> so what do you think? <clears throat> Pretty amazing. <laughs>
pretty awesome. Okay. Cool. That's that's the thing about uh, when you study the body. You know, people do it just for correlation's sake. You know, which is okay. You know, but the real reason why that section was even uh, written about was to to show and to reflect that the physical body is a photostatic copy of this. This is the archetype pattern of the universe, right. of the original. So when man is a photostatic copy of this, see, then you can understand who you really are. See, everything is spirit materialized, see. And what is spirit? Well, we tell you, spirit is. Right. Wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, but justice, foundation, power, strength. The nine attributes. Ten, really, because Kingdom is an attribute because these nine attributes are embellished in the kingdom. Right. See, that's just like you're in the tenth system of your body. You have, you know, the tenth system. That's the intention material system. Right. That's your skin. skin. See. Okay. So there's other. So you can get persnickety as you like. You know. I mean, we could say this here, for example. These two kidneys here are, are put together when in reality they're set apart. They're really about five inches apart. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, let's just draw a line. See, the kidneys would be like the Red Sea over here because when the Red Sea divided, Israel, they went through, that's the scripture says, they went through a harness. Right. Or they went through fiber breast. See? So that's the correlation. Okay? But when, but when these kidneys are put together, it, it looks like a configuration, draw a line, of a lever. Right. See? Why? So there's, I mean, there's other little things you can talk about to get into, you know, all of this, you know, like, you know, there's 12 loaves of bread here, you know, on the table of shoe bread, which corresponds with your heart, which pump, which to an average person pumps out 12, what is it, 12 pints mm -hmm. of, of blood a day, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, you, you, you know, you can make all these correlations and all, but know what the correlations are about. Right. It's pointing to him. See, his attributes, see. Uh, now, now I need the other one. Cosmogony. I need that. That plate. Because, see, here, I have the heart here. This heart is Elohim. Right. That's, that's, see, look up here. You see these hearts up here? See, in the most holy place, that's, that's Elohim. In each, day of the, in each day of the creation. See, that's him. That's him. Performing or becoming that because he he's doing it all. He is the creation okay. See here's the heart spirit spirit law see spirit law was before anything. Right. And it will, it's before anything, it continues through, and it will be here after everything is gone. Spirit law. Who is Elohim? Okay? And this is the third heaven, which is eternity. Let me see, sweetheart. Yeah, is that better, sweetheart? <laughs> eternity, the third heaven. Here's the division between spirit and matter. This is the angelic creation here. Right. That's what this is representing. And there was a lecture, man. Joe Williams had a lecture the other day. I watched it. it was, man, it was so nostalgic. But he was trying to find something in there that he did. And I wish I had been there because I had told him what it was. But go to the third day of creation. Page 62. It's the last paragraph. Now, volume one. <clears throat> volume one, yes. Uh, come up here, Nikki. And get a close up of this. Okay, volume one, page 62, last paragraph. The second bill, mm -hmm. plate 1B, the Mm -hmm. Dividing the holy place 
from, from, from the most holy place symbolizes the bud concealing and thereafter revealing the division between blossom and fruition. The blossoms on this same veil compared to the angelic figures woven on the second veil in the pattern of the tabernacle, plate one B, and the entrance through or removal of the veil of the flesh of the Messiah, who arose a quickening spirit. This is proven by the rend rending of the veil in the temple as evidence being a figure of his body. Finally, entering the yeah, most... Did you read what I... I didn't hear it. It's the last paragraph. Read it, read it again, because okay. I sure didn't hear you say it. <laughs> the second... You said, I'm sure you did, but it just slipped over me, you know. I said it too fast. The yeah. second veil, the holy place, from the most holy place, symbolizes the bud concealing and thereafter revealing... Yeah, that's, that's what I needed to hear, because I'm... Yeah, the division. Yeah, that's that's what I need to hear. The concealing and, and the revealing. Okay, and that's what the veils do. I'm talking about the second departmental veils. They either conceal or they reveal. And see, and the reason why I had that read, if you if you have a textbook, you can read it. You can look. You can see yourself. See, you can see right here where it says concealing. And then after reading, it's underlined. That's not my underline. That's in the textbook. Everybody's textbook is underlined like this, meaning that the author did this. The author being Henry Clifford Kinley. He's telling you this is important. Conceal the veils, re concealing, and thereafter revealing. He's letting you know these two things are important. Mm. That's because it's what the veils do. Right. The veils either conceal. Or they reveal. That's why they're written apart here to show you. See, written apart in your heart and mind to reveal Yahshua in you. That's the point of the veils. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here, this is a veil of division between spirit and matter. In other words, without the permission of Yahweh, you cannot penetrate this veil to see what's going on back here. Right. That's why the scientists, when they study the universe. They say, well, we could, we could trace it, the origin back to one primordial atom, which is here. But they can't go beyond that. They can't go beyond that because the origin of the atom is Elohim. Because the atom is made in the image and likeness of Elohim. But they can't go beyond the veil to, to verify that. They can only see. This is as far as they can go. Right. Right here, okay? So now here's this heart, the division between spirit and matter. This heart is coming through the veil. And when it comes through the veil, it makes a transition in part into one hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom is created in the image and likeness of Elohim. How so? Look here. Here's Elohim standing on the paved work of a sapphire stone. See, the proton of the hydrogen atom is him. The electron of the hydrogen atom would be the earth that he's standing on. Both of them is, is the same as this heart right here, which is in the midst of this pure spirit state of Yahweh, or eternity. Because Dr. Kinley in his treatise wrote that the hydrogen atom re reflects the unity of the spirit in this regard of the proton and the electron in the midst of the invisible third part, which is the universe. Okay? And that's what it has here. That's what we have illustrated here. Now, I don't know if I got, I got a science book, but I wonder if, if it has the illustration that I want. <sighs> Let me see here. The expansion of the universe? No, no. It's, what I want is the, uh, um, the, uh, the hydrological cycle. That's, that's what I want. I want oh, to it has oh. an illustration of that. That's my next thing. Make a chart of that. I do. No.
Uh, maybe under the weather, perhaps. Uh, let's see. Sun shining in all its strength and glory. Okay, this is the ocean, and we got a little bit of land, and then we got mountains. I know they're sick mountains. <clears throat> I always flunked art. I have, I have every art class I ever took, I flunked. That's why I, I like photography and videos, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, Here's the water. Uh, in fact, I'm going to add something on here. It's the land. Uh, we'll add a tree on here. This is a tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, here's what happens. See, this is called, there's a name for this. This is called the hydrological cycle. And it happens every day on this planet, without fail, constantly. Should it ever stop for one second, that would be the end for life on this planet. Now, what the hydrological cycle does is this. The sun, as you uh, see, it's got to pull the salt water, which is what the most of the, the oceans are, most of the water on the planet, the oceans. Is salt water, mm -hmm. so they so that these they pull these molecules up, all right, you know, evap in a process called evaporation. Evaporation, all right, and uh, and and from the trees, it pulls molecules up from that too. It's called expiration, you know, but it's the same process because it's got to go up. All right, and it forms these clouds. All right, forms these clouds. All right, and then see now, the sun pulls up the the water molecules, but it leaves the salt down. It leaves the salt down there. So when it rains, it rains. It rains fresh water, and it rains like up in the mountains. It may freeze, but then if it melts, then it will become rivers and lakes and streams and and it goes right back into the ocean, okay? But in the process, you know, animals can drink from it, the man can drink from it, can water your crops, you know, that kind of thing. And the cycle is repeated. Now, this is a process that Yahweh invented, okay? Because when you look at this process, you see all the attributes in play. See, see it takes wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge to come up with a system like this. All right, and the beauty of this is that it's ascending and descending, and ascending and descending, and it's showing forth love because we can't drink salt water. So Yahweh created a process by which we can, you know, so that His children, namely the man, the animals, and the plants, can drink, you know, salt water. I mean, uh, drink Sweet fresh water. water. Okay, and there's a true justice about this because because when it rains. See, just like we, we were reading about, about cancer. See, the cancer, you know, the body feeds the cancer you know, cells as long with the good ones. It doesn't discriminate. It's the same way with rain. When it rains, it doesn't discriminate. It rains on everything, mm -hmm. the man, the animals, and the plants. Okay, so that's to justice, you know. And then this, is the found, this process is the foundation 
of the ecosystem on our planet. Right. And it takes the power and the strength of the sun to pull these molecules up and change them and make them do what they do. See? So in this process right here, you see all the attributes in play. Mm -hmm. See? Like this. It has some stuff on there. Oh, okay. Let me see this. Uh, okay. This is not bad. This is, uh, you can zero in on that. See, you can see, you can see the process here. All right? See? See all the process in play. See the evaporation, transpiration, and, uh, you know, and then the precipitation. See? It's, just, it's a cycle. Right. It's just a cycle. It's what it is. It's a cycle. All right? And it's a cycle that Yahweh created. All right? Okay? Thank you for that. Appreciate that. We should have had that before, and I would have to... You would have to watch my messy artwork, okay? I would have got an F for it in art class. <laughs> they were like, look at this mess. This is so mad. You know, I, I, no, you I, know how I feel. I had art teachers like that, man. So, so I will erase this mess from your eyes, so it won't bother you anymore. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, while I'm up here, see, then you got the human embryo which is an ovum, an ovum. And then you got, you got Sammy Sperm coming up here, you know, to fertilize his egg. Hey, look, he ain't coming by himself. Right. He's got 60 million brothers and sisters are all with him. So, so he gets here, and look, they're all, they're all here, and they all surround this egg. They all surround this egg. But the first one to get there isn't necessarily the first one that's going to get in. Because it takes all of these sperms to put pressure on right. the egg, to crack it enough so someone can slip in. So someone eventually will slip in, all right, and then the, you know, the tail would break off in the head. Now, even with the, the fertilized egg, it's still at one point still considered one cell. And now that ovum has now become a zygote, all right? Now, now that it's fertilized, it will begin a process which is called mitosis. And then one egg, then one cell will become two, two become four, four become eight, eight becomes 16. And then trillions of cells later, voila, here you are. Mm -hmm. But you started off with one cell. Why? It's a reflection of the universe, see? The reflection of the universe here, see? See, it all started off with one hydrogen atom. And then one became two, two became four, and then, and then, and then Trillions and trillions and trillions of cells later, see, this became an amalgamated conglomeration of a coring mass, see, out of which the universe is derived out of. I mean, this is kind of a tame illustration, but when you stop and consider the amount of mass, right? see, in the well, whole universe, we, we have it. I couldn't find, the, <laughs> couldn't find that, but we, we definitely got that one. Got that one. We got the universe that one. We got that one. Uh, uh-huh. Yep, we got that one. Oh yeah, we got that one. Yeah, here. Here we are right here. Here's the suppose a big bang and the the one primordial atom. And see, and then it you know, then it multiplies. See? And goes through a period of expansion. Alright? See, and then it becomes galaxies and stuff, and, you know, and then they say life comes out. See, and it's still expanding, the universe. And then it's expanding, and then they'll say it gets to a point where it will stop. And it'll go into what is called the big crunch, and everything will compress on itself and go back into the one primordial element, atom, from which it started from, declaring the end from the beginning. See, now we can tell you what that is. Because, see, the first atom is Elohim. He is the first and the last. Right. Okay? Now, him standing on the pavework of a sapphire stone. See, he's the one that's at the beginning. No, let's, let's read it. We'll read it. Exodus. Exodus 24, 9 and 10 and, and Isaiah 66 and 1. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. 
Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work and a sapphire stone, as it is, as and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough. See, they saw under his feet a paved work of a, of a sapphire stone. Now we're going to find out what that sapphire stone is. Isaiah 66 and 1. Isaiah 66 and 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith Yahweh, the heavens is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Where is the house that you build it from up? Where is the house that ye built unto me? Okay. Where is the house that you built? Right. You know, really, you can't go. The whole universe is his house. Mm -hmm. you know, he was himself. But heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. See, he himself is the original. 92nd atom, as Dr. Kinley classified the hydrogen atom to be. See, the hydrogen atom. The first atom, if I thought about it, I should have brought my periodic table chart. But I'll say this. When, we, when you talk about hydrogen, It only has one, it has one proton and one electron, okay? Now when you look at, look at the size of it, like this. See, an electron, I mean a, a proton, which is positively charged, is pretty big. A neutron is just about as big as a proton. It's the only difference is it has no, it has no uh, charge. Now, an electron, compared to these behemoths, is like that. But it makes up for its lack of size and mass with a very strong electrical charge. So now here we have hydrogen, which is one proton and one electron. So it has one of these and one of these. Now, it can split into isotopes. Now, an isotope is a variation of an element, usually done by adding neutrons to it, because neutrons have no charge. But because they have weight and size and mass, it can change the characteristics of an element. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in this case, if I added a neutron to this, I would get I would get this element. Or this isotope. Deuterium. Deuterium. And deuterium has one proton and one neutron. In other words, it has one of these and one of these. Now, compared to hydrogen, which has one of these and one of these, this is heavier than this. Okay? All right? Well, thank you. Just lay it there. Maybe I can. Maybe, you know, we'll see. Depending on time. All right? So, so deuterium is heavier than this. Okay? And deuterium has its uses. You know, just like over here, you can, with hydrogen, you can create H2O. H2O, which we know is right. a compound, which is water. Deuterium can do the same thing. It, it can combine with oxygen and create D2O, which is heavy water, which is what they use in atomic uh, piles and stuff, you know, because the, the, the viscosity of of, of, uh, deuter of deuterium water is so thick you, you, you can hardly move in it, not to mention it's poisonous. Mm. All right? But that's how heavy it is, okay? Now, this is, this is an isotope. This is an isotope of this. Then this can become another isotope. This is called tritium. See, tritium, which is one proton and two 
neutrons. So this is heavier than this, which is way heavier than this. Okay? However, tritium, just look at the word tritium, tri. It tells you right there, tri, which means three. It has three particles. That tells you that right there. Here's another thing about tritium. Tritium has the ability to glow. Right. It's radioactive. It glows in the dark. In fact, I remember way back in the day, back in the 50s, early 60s, they used to, they used to put a, a, a little bit of tritium inside luminous watches to make them glow in the dark. You know, a lot of people didn't really realize that, but they didn't realize at the time that it was radioactive. <laughs> right. Okay. But what you have here is two manifestations of the one element, two isotopes, see? See, see of the one element. Why? Because it's a reflection. Let's read Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans 1 and 19. Saul, a servant of... 1, 19 and 20? Oh. Romans. Romans, the first chapter, 19th verse. Oh, sorry. No, I got Acts. No, I was on the first chapter. First verse. Okay, so 19 verse Romans. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For mm -hmm. Yahweh hath shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world mm -hmm. are clearly seen. See, this is clearly seen, read. Being understood by the things that are made. This, these are part of the things that are made. Go ahead. Even his eternal power and supernal nature. So that they are without excuse. Okay, so see, so now we can see this with hydrogen, how it is two manifestations of the one spirit. Here's Yahweh, pure spirit. Here's two manifestations. First, Yahweh incorporeal, super incorporeal form, great heavenly anthropomorphic being. And then here is Yahshua Messiah coming in the likeness of sinful flesh. Two manifestations of the one spirit, because the universe is only in two parts. There's an incorporeal creation, right. and there's a physical creation. Okay? So that's what we have here. We have, in the, cre in the physical creation, two manifestations of the one element to point to yeah, Yahweh, to Yahweh. And there's two manifestations of one spirit. Okay? Now, where's I gonna go with this? Okay, uh, well, since y'all gave me this, I may as well, what time is it? And I, I, I may as well see if I can do something with this. This is the periodic table of elements here. I wish I had mine because it had the certain information on there that I really, really liked. Um, okay, um, I need to, let's, let's just look at this. And you know, and, uh, and you can make some real comparisons with this. See, this is called a periodic table. You know, a period, a period. Look at the word period or periodic. See, see, the reason why it's called a periodic table because it repeats itself at intervals. That's why it's called a period. You know, something that, you know, that happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, period, a length or proportion of time. Um, physics, the interval of time between successive occurrences of the same state in mm -hmm. an oscill oscillatory mm -hmm. or cyclic mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon. Do you look at the word periodic. Does it have that? Do you have that? Periodic, appearing or occurring at intervals, uh, chemistry, uh, relating to the periodic table of the elements, mm -hmm. or pattern of chemical properties mm -hmm. that underlies uh, lies it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, now this is from... That's good enough. That's good enough. Because see, each line here, see there are seven periods up here. See... This line right here goes all the way across to here, and that's one period. This line goes all the way across here, that's another period. Then, then when you come to the end, you have to start over. And there's another one coming here. It's four. 
Here's another one coming here. That's a five. Here's another one coming here. That's six. See, this line doesn't count because, see, look down here. These lines are here. Six. See, seven. And seven. Because, see, these goes up. These, yeah, yeah. See, one, two, three, four, five. And these two go up here, which would be six, which would be six and seven. So there are seven periods here. Okay. Now, hydrogen here, I don't know how close you can get up to this. If, can you read the numbers? Yeah. You can read the numbers. It says 1.00789. Oh, now they're kind of far. You can read it. You can read it on there? Yes. Okay. Now, now we, we should be able to. Yep. All right. Right there. Okay, now you can zoom out. Because yeah, I'll write it up here. See, it says it's 1.00797. Now this is called this is called the atomic weight mm. of hydrogen, and it's measured in AMUs. That stands for atomic molecular units. 1.00797. That's the atomic weight for hydrogen. Now. Any good mathematician that, that, that will look at this can say, oh, well, I don't need all that really long number. I can round it off. I can round this number off to uh, 1.008. That is this number. That's this number rounded off to the nearest decimal, which is 1.008, which is the atomic weight. And in some cases, if you look up the atomic weight of hydrogen, it'll give you this number, hmm. 1.008. See? Well, guess what? This number here, 1008, all right, 008. 1008 Park Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. That's the address where Dr. Kennedy received the vision. The address that Dr. Kennedy received the vision is the same as the atomic weight for hydrogen. Okay? Just thought you'd like to know that. All right, so hydrogen is the first element. In fact, hydrogen, hydrogen is the father of all these elements. Right. The reason why Dr. Kinley, see, when you look at it, there are 92 natural elements. Everything else, see, and that goes up to this element here, which is uranium. Everything else beyond uranium are what you would call artificial elements, or elements that were created, and cyclotrons, and atomic reactors, and things like that, okay? But there are 92 natural elements. 91 of them are threefold, with a proton, neutron, and electron. Hydrogen is the only one that only has a proton and electron. And like I said, someone else would say, oh, see, you know, it messed up there. See, it's not threefold, mm -hmm. but it is. Mm -hmm. It's embedded in the invisible third right. part, okay? Now, here... These are these this, this these are alkaline metals here. These are very uh, these metals are very uh, uh, how can I reactive. reactive? That's the wild word I'm looking for. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. See, these are very reactive metals. All right, like potassium. I know you can take a pinch of potassium and drop it in a in a glass of water, and you'll see it erupt. Right. You know, I mean, and cesium. I know you can. That, that is so reactive, it, it literally will burn under water, you know, you know, that kind of thing. So when you compare it to this, see, that would be like going through the gate, coming to the brazen altar of incense here, all right, because there was a constant burning here, all right, that's what that would be like, all right. see, with the periodic table, with those elements, all right. Now, I'm back over here. Now. Uh, the same way with these elements here, and then, and then you see these lines here that go out to these, to this set of elements here. The first set, the first element here is lanthanum. Lanthanum. See, and, and this line is called the lanthanide series. All right. This element here is called act, uh, actinium, and this is called the actinide series. Now, lanthanum. See, the word lanthium, if you look it up, can we look up the word lanthium? 
And I want an etymology. Anybody, because we're running out of time. <coughs> what you got? Platinum is a chemical element with the symbol LA and atomic number 57. Mm -hmm. It is a soft, ductile, silvery white metal that tarnishes slowly when exposed to air. All right, do you have an etymology, what the meaning and of the word is? The etymology. Ancient Greece. Uh -huh. Greek, Come on. Because it had gone long undetected in mineral ores. Um, what does it mean? <laughs> that's what it shows. Huh? Etymology of lanthanum from ancient Greek um, pronunciation. Just read what it says. A chemical element with an atomic number 57. Okay, well, I want the etymology. I want to, what the meaning of, of the word is. Does it have that? Anybody? If I get it quicker than y'all, then that makes me want to. I want the etymology. We know it's it a. It says etymology here, look. The what etymology, does what does it say? Because they thought. Un it, it, laughing though, to escape notice, is right in front of you. To escape notice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to escape my notice. <laughs> and it did. Okay. <laughs> right under your notice. To escape notice, okay. okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> to escape notice, or I'll make a, a simple word. Hidden. Hidden. Hidden, okay. That's what it means. Okay. It means hidden. Or like something is buried. When you bury something, it's hidden. Reverse. See, so that would be like the brazen labor. Ah. See, see, we we got the burning here type of death. Now we got lanthanum, which is the brazen labor or hidden. Okay, now that's up here. All right. Now here we got this element, actinium. Now can, you, can we find the etymology for that? Actinium. Occurring as impurity and uranium ores. Origin, Greek, early 20th century from Greek. Ray. Read it. I am reading it. Just it'll re show me a lot of stuff. Here, you can read it. Uh, hold on. It means, it, it says, cognizant it with Sanskrit, it means light or ray. It's right there. Ray. See, the word actinum comes from Greek, actinos, which means beam or ray. All right, actinum, okay, that's what it means. Beam or ray? It means a beam or a ray of light. See, it means a beam or a ray of light. Light. All right, why? Because what, in Israel, when they came up out of, out of Egypt, they followed that phenomenal cloud, right? right. It was a cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. See, that was light. See, so when it was out here, there was light out here at all times for Israel. See, either by daylight or by the, the light of the cloud. Mm -hmm. And see, that's reflected here 
in the periodic table. See? So here's we got the fire and the laver, got the, the brazen laver, the burial, and we got the cup of holy anointing on. See the light. See coming out. Alright? Now, coming up here, see this would be like the holy place. Alright? And here we have this. I don't know if you zoom in on that. Can you see that? This W here. Yeah. This is tungsten. Alright? Tungsten, we're pointing that out because tungsten is an element that's in light bulbs. Right. Okay? Why? Come over here to the tabernacle pattern. What's well, in the holy place here? We have a light, we have a lampstand. Okay? See, we gave light in the holy place. Okay? Now, come back over here. See, we'll see this element. Where's the end? Right here, Fe, ferros, see, which is iron. See, that would be like the table of shoe bread because right. everybody tells you that you know you, you know you need iron in your blood every day. I know my mom when it comes springtime, she's like, "Oh, line us up, man, give us a that is big ladle, give us a big dollop of fortified geritol with iron." You know, I said, "Yeah, I need some pep in your step," you know, that kind of thing. But that would be like the table of shoe bread because that's your daily sustenance. Okay. All right. Now we come over here, down here. Here, this Zn, that stands for zinc. All right. Now zinc. You know, when I have a cold or my or, or my lungs is congested, I usually just suck on some zinc tablets. You know, because it's good for your lungs. And see, that's good for your lungs up here. And when you draw a line, that would be like the altar of incense right. here. Okay. Alright? Now, next category we have over here, this blue category. See, look up here. See, we have C, C for carbon, N for nitrogen, and zero, I mean O for oxygen. Now, carbon, we're, carbon is element number six, right? See, which is the sixth, you know, we're, we're, what we're looking at is the sixth step of the tabernacle pattern, which is the veils, right. the blue, purple, and scarlet. And see, and we're the human race, well, not just us, but every all life here is carbon-based life, life forms. It's based on carbon, mm -hmm. which is the sixth element. Then we, then we have nitrogen and oxygen, which, make, which are two gases that make up the bulk of the atmosphere that we breathe, is the air. Here. So when we look up at the sky, you know, like out here today, it's a nice, beautiful day out here today. Clear skies. What color is the sky? Blue. It's blue, see? The sky is blue. Why? Because that's one of the colors on the veils. And then we look at the uh, iodine. This iodine is under I here. See? That's iodine. Iodine secrete, you know, you know, that's is secreted by the thyroid gland. And iodine means purple. So now we got the color purple here with iodine. And then up here, right above it, we have the element bromine. Bromine is a metal. And the color of bromine is red. It's so a reddish color metal. So in this column here, we got the principles of blue, purple, and scarlet, the sixth step. Okay? Got it? Up here. Blue, blue, purple, and scarlet. See, that's the sixth step. All right? And see, and as I said, the blue over here in the, in the body, the blue represents deoxygenated blood. The red uh, okay. represents the oxygenated blood, and the purple represents the iodine secreted by the thyroid gland, which is located in your throat, by your throat, okay? All right, now we got this green area here. See, this? these are what is called noble gases. And the reason why they're called noble gases is because they are inert. That means they do not react with anybody, mm -hmm. all right? They stand alone and are aloof. Hmm? Oh yes. Oh please, please, my dear. Thank you. All right. I really appreciate you. Ah, refresh. Ah, refreshing. Thank you. Hydrological cycle. Ah, now, these are noble gases. They're inert gases. They don't mix with anybody. Okay. They are, they are at rest, if you can say that. Now, they don't mix with any other, other elements. However, there is an exception. This one right here, this is neon. Right. This is neon gas. It's an exception to the inertness. 
because neon will mix with something. All right, it will mix with electricity. Right. Electricity will cause neon gas to glow. That's why we have neon lights. See, see, this is like the most holy place, and the, and the flashing of the neon light would be like up here in the most holy place, the flash of the Shekinah, when the high priest went up on the Day of Atonement. Okay? See? So now what we did was we took the periodic table of elements, and we laid it on the tabernacle pattern to show how Yahweh is operating this. And look, you can look here. Okay, look up. Look, look this up. The Optech rule. Look that up. Let me see here. The octet rule is that an atom will be most stable mm -hmm. when surrounded by eight electrons mm -hmm. in the valence shell. An atom that does not have eight electrons will bond with other atoms. See, that's the reason why these won't. These are inert. See, if you can, I don't know if you can zoom in and look here on the right side, with the exception of helium. All these elements here have eight electrons in their outer orbit. So you, you see the number, see these numbers up here? Can you see those? Uh, can you see them under? I can. Yes. Okay, so it says, see, eight. To see, in other words, neon has eight electrons in its outer orbit, so it won't bond with nothing. See, same way with argon. See, it has eight. Same way with krypton. Y yes, there is such an element as krypton. Right. All right. Mm. And so, and krypton and xenon, see, it has eight. See, and radon has eight. So these elements won't bond with nothing if they are in Earth. See, they won't, they won't mix with nothing else. Okay? But again, this is like the most holy place because they are at rest, at, at, at rest and they're at peace. And neon, when mixed with electricity, it will glow. See, which is a type of the flash of the Shekinah. Right. And so, because they have eight electrons here at the end, eight signifies a new beginning. So as I told you, all of these, you know, are, are periods. So this period stopped here with eight, got to start over, a new period. See, got to come, come up with eight, got to start over, a new period. Come back, come end up with eight, got to start over, a new period. See, why? Because when you look up here on the ages of dispensations, computer. See, you have seven ages up here, seven ages. And when Yahweh completes the seventh age, or this week of ages, then he's got, he's got to start over, he's got to end it, and then start over, a new week. See, and the first day of the week is it's the same as the eighth age. The eighth age is the first age of a new set of ages. Got to start over, a new beginning. See, that's what Yahweh's doing with this. Yeah. Okay. Boy, that went quicker than I thought. <laughs> but I hope it was understandable. Oh, yeah. Because, see, we're just taking the pattern and we're laying it on stuff and measuring it. This, the pattern is the great measuring rod of the universe by which all things can be measured by. Okay? See, we started off with a question about the human body and the comparison of it. Right. See, like I said, when people make correlations, they just make, you know, just the obvious correlation, not realizing that what you're doing is you're trying to understand the theosophic body of Elohim. Right. That's what you're really doing. Okay? And in the process, understanding the cosmogony of the thing, then you'll be able to understand the eschatology of it. Yeah. Because if you understand the beginning, then you'll you'll have to understand the end. Right. Okay? How much time I got? I got 20 minutes. Maybe I could do it. 39, 38, 39, 40. But he said a new beginning on the eighth. The same way it's set up there. You got the angelic, and then whatever we decide to to create, right? So we being we being that angelic. Right? See, we're being. What, what, here's the thing that a lot maybe we don't we don't quite understand. Here, look at these circles. Here in the beginning, you have Elohim here, right? All right, in eternity, kingdom of Elohim, but. He's by himself, so it appears. But then as it goes to the creation, 
growth making the creation and, and coming down, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, dispensation is great. The, uh, the, the explosion of, you know, the false prophets and all and the judgment. Then the new heavens and new earth. Here he is here, but he's surrounded now. See, because oh. see, now we are with him. See, he's, right. he's taken that. He's taken these souls made new out of, out of this creation and put it into him so that we will be in him in the next set of ages, right. in the next oh. creation. And in him we'll decide how, uh, how the universe will be. Oh, okay, I don't need a clamp, I don't think. showed you how it came about. See, here's Elohim coming through the veils of inscrutability, incomprehensibility, and we showed you how his makeup is. It started off with intelligence, the crown, flanked by wisdom and knowledge. These attributes give him birth to these set of attributes, which in turn gives sets uh, birth to these set of attributes, which are all incorporated or encompassed in the kingdom. All right? And then this is the same as this heart. And this heart here, see, it's the first cause of, of all creation, of the universe. Both first the angelic creation that's signified here on the veils, then coming through the veils, transitioning in part into one hydrogen atom and telling it, be fruitful and multiply. See, then, they, which they did and became this amalgamated uh, uh, conglomeration of a coin mass out of which the universe, the physical creation, was derived from. Okay? Now, here is eschatology, the end of all things. And see, and here's Yahshua being revealed from heaven. And see, when we say heaven, we ain't talking about the atmospheric right. heaven. See, we got three heavens over here. We got eternity, the atmospheric heaven, and space. All right? So now when Yahshua is revealed from heaven, it ain't, it ain't space, and it's not the atmospheric heaven. See, it's, it's really eternity, which is in the hearts and minds of right. those who know. See? Because, see, Yahshua is not, is not coming from somewhere. Yahshua is already mm -hmm. here in the hearts and minds of those who know. The problem is he just has not been universally revealed. Right. See? But he's been revealed to us. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I mean, we're not waiting for the universe to end. I mean, we're... That we already we already in it, but it's just that we got to go through the motions here, Transition. you know, according to the purpose. And so now here's Yahshua. He's got to appear, see, or he's got to come through the veil. We told you there's a veil. See, he's concealed to the world. Right. So he's got to come through the veil. What is that veil? Mm -hmm. Acts seventeen twenty four. Acts 17 and 24. Yahweh who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, mm -hmm. as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one man all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth mm -hmm. and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek him if haply they might feel after him and find him through though he be not far from every one of us okay good enough 
All right, now the veil is the human flesh. The, right. Dr. Kimmy said this once in the lecture. He said, look, we're already united one in the flesh. I'm talking about the human race. All, all eight billions, we are united in the flesh because we come from one man. Adam. Right. I, I like to say it like this. The whole human race, we're all first cousins to each other, just eight billion times removed. Okay? But that's the veil that has to be rent in twain so that Yahweh, so that Yahshua will appear. See, and look, we got this plate up here, angelic transgression. See, look here. See, we got these veils, angelic invisibility, meaning you can't see. Right. See, until they come through the veil, and then they can appear. See, Lucifer can appear to you, just like he appeared to Eve and others, in a state of incorporeal visibility. Okay? Going to do that. And angels, angels and demons can do that. Mm -hmm. They can appear to you in this state. However, when they come through this veil, the division between invisibility and visibility, when they come through, now when demons come through, they, they have to incarnate right. in the flesh. However, when the righteous angels come through, like Michael and Gabriel, they don't have to incarnate on the flesh. They can take on a physical body. Or in other words, they can take on the likeness of sinful flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the point I'm, I want to make is, see, right now, the world is behind a veil of angelic invisibility, right. which is the same way up here. And Yahshua has to come through that veil, and he's going to make an incorporeal visibility thing to the whole universe. That means all angels will see him, all demons will see him, and all souls will right. see him. Dead or alive. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah look, we'll all be there at this one. Mm -hmm. Okay? And see, and we, and see, and we in Yahshua will be revealed from heaven in him. These folks here, they'll, they'll see that they, what they have. That is to say, their concepts, their opinions, their theories, that what they've been wearing were filthy rags all along, compared to the glory that is in Yahshua the Messiah. Okay? All right? Uh, maybe we could read something. First uh, Thessalonians, it's at 4.13, I'm thinking. But I would not have you to be ignorant. Yes. Do you want me to start with 12? No. Okay. Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahshua will he bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Savior shall not prevent them which are, are asleep. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of Yahweh, and the dead in the Messiah shall first rise shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahshua in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right. So now, and people have a problem with that last verse. Uh, we shall be caught up in the air. Uh -huh. and the, see, see, that's what the, the Christians say right. about the rapture. Mm -hmm. But not realizing, see, this Paul is speaking spiritual. See, look, this is body, soul, and spirit. We're going to be caught up in our souls. Mm -hmm. And the clouds, we're going to be caught up. We, we told you earlier that your brain, right. gray and white matter, is like a cloud, see. Because when they went up over here, see, Yahshua went up on the ground. See, this was a vision here. See, people, see, first of all, Yahshua resurrected a quickening spirit, not a physical body. That's the first error. Second, when he went up into a cloud, this was a vision. This was not an actual physical body. Right. So, if he went, so if he left in a vision, so to speak, when he, has, when he comes back, so to speak, it has to be in a vision. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's just that simple. All right? Now, uh, I don't really have like 10 minutes. Okay, let me get this in here. Uh, Second Thessalonians... Uh, one and six. 
2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with Yahweh to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us, when Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh, right. and that obey not the gospel of the same, our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh, and from his and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his sons, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Okay. All right. So now they say he's taking place. Take it, in other words, when he appears in taking flaming vengeance, you will appear with him taking flaming vengeance. Right. Who? Or anybody who didn't believe. That could be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your best friend, your boss, you know, your teammates, you know, you know. Because see, it's all going to be brought back to their remembrance, you know, that the gospel was preached to them, and you know, sure. and they could come up and say, "Well, well, well I didn't know." I, well, but it's too late. It was preached to you. It was told to you. You had the opportunity. Not now, it's too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, we are the ones that will push them into the lake of fire. See, you love the ones that you love, and we will be doing that. They, they're like, no, no, you can't do this to me, man. We used to play ball together, man. Come on, we, we were ace boom cool, man. Yeah. We were, you can't do this. It's almost kind of similar to like what it was with Noah. You know, because Noah built an ark, right. and he was told to get in the ark seven days before it rained. And they laughed at him. You right. know, they, they mocked him from the outside. They said, hey, what's going on, man? You know, Noah, what's going yeah, on, man? Noah, hey, uh, hey y'all, hey, you know, Noah thinks it's going to rain. Hey, let's, <laughs> let's, help, let's help float this boat for him, you know? <laughs> I mean, they were just mocking him, you know? And then when the first raindrop happened, then they was like, wait a minute, oh. And then all of a sudden they started banging on the door yeah. then. But they couldn't but Noah couldn't do nothing for the simple reason. Noah didn't shut the door. See, 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 no, see, you can't nothing you can do about this situation, because Yahweh's the one that's shutting the door on them. Right. See. And saying, don't you think people are banging on Noah's door? Man, no, open the door, man. Come on, man. I helped cut the wood for this, man. Come on, man. I was with you for 50 years cutting the wood before I left. But now I know. I, I believe you now. Come on, man. Open the door. Well, it's too late, see? It's just, just too late. Okay? All right. So that's what happens here. This is a descending plate. So that's why I started from here and descended down. And see, everything is cast into the lake of fire to be regenerated or to be renovated. You know, I used to work in the iron works, you know, and I've seen molten steel, you know, you know, wax steel, so they would throw it, you know, throw it back in the hopper that was rusted and whatnot, and, you know, it would come out remolted, and all the impurities burnt out, and we come out just brand new, sparkling new. And this is a new earth state. All right, let's read, because uh, I'm out of time here, First Corinthians 15th chapter, uh, and I'll be about finished, I think. You know, that one verse says, Yahweh wiped away all tears. Um... Start with uh, <clears throat> 21. First Corinthians 15 and 21. <coughs> For since by man come death, by man come also the resurrection of the dead. See, because of Adam came death. Right. One man, you know, because of Adam. One man death, and because of one man came the resurrection. Okay, go ahead and read. For as in Adam all died, mm -hmm. even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. Read. But every man in his own order, mm -hmm. the Messiah, the first fruits, mm -hmm. afterward, they that are Messiahs at his coming. Mm -hmm. Then cometh the end. Now, then cometh the end, the end of all eschatology. Right? Then cometh eschatology. The end. Go ahead. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh. Mm, see, the, the kingdom to Yahweh. All of this, see, this is descending, coming down here, renovation, new earth. This is ascending, new earth, and then he's going to present the kingdom to Yahweh here. 
Go ahead. Even the Father, mm -hmm. when he shall have put down all rule mm -hmm. and all authority and power, mm -hmm. for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Now, see, he must reign till all enemies are put under his feet. Here, all enemies are put under his feet. It draw a line. See, there's the uh. feet here. See, all enemies under his feet. See, and when that happens, see that everything will be renovated. The universe will be renovated. All right, go ahead. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. For he hath put all things under his feet. Mm -hmm. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is excluded. Now, see, he's excluded. Now, that's, see, look, you can look at this. This is happening here at the end of the fourth age. All right? The new earth state, this is the fifth age right here, all right, where we all shall be glorified, you know, the whole deal, immortally glorified, a new earth state. Draw a line. I'm over here. Here, on the third trip of the high priest, he had to put on garments of beauty and glory, as depicted here. Those 12 stones depicted Israel. He was putting Israel on, and he took Israel up with him right. to present Israel before Yahweh and himself as well, right? See, he has to transverse the veil, which is the sixth step. Here, Elohim has to put all things under him. In other words, when we are glorified, he puts us on just as the high priest puts on the breastplate and the ephod and the mitre, etc. And then all things are put under him. And then he's got to, to take off that he himself is standing by himself, the sixth age. Then he himself, keep reading, which put all things under him, and uh -huh. when all things shall be subdued unto him, uh -huh. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him mm -hmm. that put all things under him, mm -hmm. that Yahweh may be all in all. See, now that's the seventh age here. Elohim, see, this is the fifth age, the new earth state. Sixth age is the sixth step in this, in this, in this pattern, mm -hmm. which is Elohim putting all things under him, that he himself must be made subject to Yahweh, so that Yahweh would be all in all. This is the seventh age. This is the, the sabbatical age. Then afterwards, he's going to have to come out again. That's this, this image here. This is at the end of the ages. This is the beginning of a new set of ages. Why? He's in the midst of the seven-branch lampstand. He has seven stars in his hand, signifying seven new ages. Uh, where's it at? It's in the textbook, volume one. It's in the Ages of Dispensations section. Yeah, page 97. No, 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 I'll take that back, not 97. I'll take that back. 93. Where it says uh, the Sabbath. You read that and I'll be about there. Okay, now she's reading about the Sabbath. See, let's see, look, this is the seventh age here. This is the sabbatical exact words. This is Elohim with us on. He's right. got the breastplate on, just like the high priest did on the Day of Atonement. All right, he's up here on the Sabbath, the seventh age. Now he's got to come out from behind the veil in principle, just like he did here. The veil of inscrutability and incomprehensible. He's got to come from behind the veil again. Same way here, except this time he's looking like this. And this is the reason why. Read. The Sabbath is the day of Yahweh, uh -huh. or the, the, the mm -hmm. day, before the beginning of the eighth, or the beginning of another series of ages. Th this is the beginning of the eighth, or another series of ages. That's signified by the seven-branch lampstand. He's, the seven-branch lampstand signifies seven ages has been completed. Right. He's gone through seven ages. He has seven stars in his hands to show forth he's going to sow seven new ages. Really, the seven stars is himself. Look, come over here. Up here. See, if I was to do this, I could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts up here. But in reality, it's not seven hearts. It's just one heart being manifested seven different times. Right. It's the same way with the seven stars. It's not really seven stars, but one star who is Elohim, manifested through seven ages, just like he manifested himself on the days of creation. It's the same thing in principle. Why? Because everything is a repetition. Finish reading that and we'll be out of here. It is necessary to mention here that Yahweh is eternal. Mm -hmm. It is also necessary that you do as the Apostle Paul advised Timothy. 
Study the scriptures to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the dispensations and ages. And this is what we did. We rightly divided the ages according to the illustrations. Right. See, because Dr. Kennedy, see, the only reason why Dr. Kennedy could make an ages is if he had to make the illustration, we have the scriptures to look at. And that's all, that's all we're doing, showing cosmogony, the beginning, to eschatology, the end, the ending. See, this is the true 92nd atom, the, the original hydrogen atom, right. the original or the archetype pattern of the universe. Who is Elohim? Of which you are a photostatic copy thereof. See? See, and you wonder why people don't believe in this. There are people that don't, because people don't take the time to research this. And they, 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 uh, and they just don't want to accept the basic simple truth that Yahweh is a universal spirit power right. with a universal spirit law embellished therein that is guiding and controlling everything in the universe. So, all right? And that's what we want to be in touch with. That's what we want to be part of. See, my, I, boy, I've got questions at the end of the age. I, I know I'm not going to get answers to now, but boy, i got a few. Because I remember Dr. Kenley saying, he said, look, there's some things that just won't be revealed till we get to the end of the ages, and then we'll be able to look back and see and understand, oh, hmm, you know what? I understand why Yahweh made the universe now. I even understand why he even made a man. What? See? Now all these things will be revealed and answered for us. But for right now, I, I know, this, we, we just enjoy what we have. Right. And knowing that there's more and greater to come. All right? Thank you very much for tuning in with us. We hope that you were edified by the things that you heard. Uh, as always, uh, be safe, be healthy. But most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he most truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. Okay. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, thank everybody out there for tuning in. Uh, thank you for your donations. We sure could use them. And uh, uh, those that are out in Mexico, Colombia, all seven continents of the world, tune in next week, next Sunday, for some more. It's a great teaching. Uh, Lynette, you come up here, uh, doxology. And we'll dismiss our class now. Let us all stand to be dismissed. I'll be taking the dox, uh, doxology reading from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 How you doing? Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you, she had a little chocolate. <laughs> <laughs>